We know the exact date the tribulation must begin. We may not know the year, but we know the day, because the tribulation or 70th week of Daniel must begin on this day. And you're saying, you know, in my church, saying something like that would be considered heresy. But if you study the Bible, you realize it can't, for instance, be on Christmas or July 4th or even April Fool's Day, although that would be humorous in kind of a dark sort of way. And, and the Bible is very clear about that. And today we're going to show you what that day is and why the Bible is certain that it has to be that day. Now, some of you will say, well, no one knows the day or hour. And, and that's absolutely true. No one does know the day or hour Jesus returns. But we're not talking about the day Jesus returns, are we? We're talking about the day the tribulation begins, and they're different things. Obviously, none of the major rapture theories contend that Jesus must return on the same day the tribulation starts, not pre-trib, post-trib, or pre-wrath. So forget about that argument, please. Tribulation, Jesus' return, two different things. And as we stated, we're not talking about knowing the year. Now, we're pretty sure it may be this year, but that is a guess on our part. However, the date we are sure of, and that date is coming up, folks. It's less than a week away in this year's calendar. This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and you follow this channel because have you heard this teaching from your favorite teacher or pastor or your church? No. Well, that's why you follow this channel. In fact, you hear just the opposite in those places, either that it can start any old time or that it starts in the spring or 1290 days from this date, etc. Or it's when all these planets have a conjunction or something, but biblically, all of that is impossible. The tribulation begins on the date Tishri 1, which if you don't follow prophecy, must sound like gibberish to you. Tishri, it doesn't even sound like English, and guess what? It isn't. It's the seventh month of the Hebrew year, and Tishri 1 is the Hebrew secular new year, the day some refer to as Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And the Hebrew Feast of the Lord, the Feast of Trumpets, happens to occur on that day as well. I bet one of those other names that I just mentioned sounds more familiar than Tishri 1. So the tribulation must begin on the secular new year, which coincides with the Feast of Trumpets. Your next question is probably, okay, Nelson... And we know this why? We know this because the tribulation, also called the 70th week of Daniel, is a week of years. Weeks of days always start on a Sunday, you know, the day after the Sabbath. And weeks of years start on Tishri 1 or the Feast of Trumpets. So let's start digging into our Bible. In Daniel 9.24, the angel Gabriel told the prophet Daniel that 70 weeks were appointed for his people and his holy city. The final of these 70 weeks is the tribulation week or the seven years of the tribulation. The word weeks in Hebrew is the word Shabuim, and it means a grouping of seven, either a grouping of seven days or seven years. In Genesis 29, 27, Jacob was tricked by his father-in-law Laban into working an extra seven years in Laban's fields, almost like an indentured servant, to earn his wife Rachel. Complete the week of this one, and he was talking about his other daughter Leah, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. So in ancient Hebrew times, a week was a grouping of seven years. Just like today, we have decades to group years, they had weeks or Shabuim. And of course, a year must start on the first day of the year. Duh. So when Gabriel told Daniel about these weeks, Daniel and every other Hebrew knew exactly what he was talking about. They also knew when the week was to begin. It always started 
on New Year's Day. So far, so good. Are you tracking with this? Because it's a novel concept if you're in the Western Christian churches. You know, in some places, Messianic churches, they may understand this, but most Western churches, this is a new concept. So now, as we said, we think this may actually be the year the tribulation starts. And the actual date on our Gregorian calendar is October 2nd. Yeah, that soon, a week away. If the tribulation starts that soon, you're going to need some resources. It is very likely that channels like this all over the globe are going to get censored and maybe pretty quickly. So we're in the process of creating something we're calling tribulation tracks, flash drives, with the videos of this channel on it. So even if they take us down, you can have them in your home. Keep an eye peeled for those. We'll talk more about them in the future. Now, as we said, it's good you've been tracking with what we've been saying because it's going to start to get a little more complex. It isn't quite that easy. The only wrinkle in this is that there are actually two Jewish years running simultaneously six months apart. Each one is out of phase with the other by six months. This means there are two Jewish years and two Jewish New Years, a religious year that begins on the first day of the month of Nisan and a secular agricultural year that begins on the seventh month or Tishri on Rosh Hashanah. So the obvious problem is, did Daniel know which one of those years Gabriel was talking about? He did, but let's explain why. There are three ways you can know. The simple one is that we have ancient history books that tell us exactly how the ancient Israelites used to keep time. Jubilees is one of these books. Now, it's not infallible, it's not in the canon, but it was well respected by the ancient church fathers. And although it could be wrong about many things, it couldn't be wrong about the day of the year that the year started. It would be laughed off the bookshelf if it was. Tishri was the year when the week started. Second is the way they celebrated something called the Jubilee. We learn about the Jubilee in Leviticus 25. And just like the last year of the Shabuim, or the weeks of years, the Jubilee had an agricultural aspect to it. In the final year of the Shabuim, there was to be no sowing or reaping of the land. In the same way, there was to be no sowing or reaping during a jubilee year. They were both part of the agricultural cycle. They were both agricultural years. They served an agricultural purpose. Whereas the religious year served a religious purpose. So the weeks of years in the religious year are different. You can also tell they're different by when they start. In Leviticus 25, we further learn that the Jubilee year started on Yom Kippur, also called the Day of Atonement, Tishri 10, 10 days later than a normal secular agricultural year. So it was 10 days out of phase with a normal year. But, but it was a six months and 10 days out of phase with a religious year. This would make it impossible for the religious year to be the years in which the no sowing and reaping were to happen. Because when you added the Jubilee into it, it would completely foul the works because they would overlap each other. This would not happen if the no sowing or reaping laws applied to only the secular agricultural years. So the secular agricultural years are what are called the Shabuim or the weeks of years, out of Daniel 9, 24 through 27. So we have just ruled out that the tribulation can start on any old day because it has to start on a New Year's Day. And we've ruled out the possibility that it could start in the spring because those are religious years, not agricultural years. And there's an agricultural purpose to the week of years.
So now we know the weeks of years begin on the Feast of Trumpets or Tishri 1. In fact, each year of the tribulation will begin on a Tishri 1. The Jubilee year later will start on a Tishri 10, but all the years of the tribulation itself start on Tishri 1. But what about the religious years? Are they involved as well? And the answer is yes. Remember the phrase, time, times, and half a time, from Daniel 12, 7 and Revelation 12, 14. You know, it's the last half of the tribulation. You've probably heard that. Three and a half years. The word time here is moedim, or appointed time. Appointed times are another term for the feasts of the Lord. So a time, in time, times, and half a time, is a cycle of feasts of the Lord a yearly cycle of these feasts, and they begin in the spring with the religious year. So the tribulation is one cycle of seven agricultural secular years simultaneously happening six months out of phase with seven cycles of Moedim beginning with the religious years. Yeah, pretty complex and very Hebraic, But that complex part is probably why you haven't heard about this before. But there's yet another clue that the years are going to start in the fall from the fact that time times and half a time is three and a half years, starting at the midpoint of the tribulation. If the midpoint of the tribulation is three and a half years from the point where the tribulation is going to end, well, it can't be in the same season of the year when the tribulation starts, right? Doesn't that make sense? Because there's a half a year in there. It has to be six months out of phase from when the tribulation starts. And if these truly are cycles of Moedim, which start in the spring, well, then the tribulation has to start in the fall. So the first big takeaway from this video is the tribulation or Daniel's 70th week isn't going to start on some random day as I happen to hear all the time from Western cultural scholars. And if we know when it starts, we know it starts in the fall, then we also know when the tribulation ends. And the answer is simple and not so simple. The simple answer is that if it starts in Tishri, it's going to end in Tishri. But remember us talking about the Jubilee? The Jubilee not only had agricultural meaning, it was also the year when inheritance was returned to the rightful owner. The property that had been sold or lost during the previous years, that property was returned in the Jubilee year. That is exactly what happens at the return of Jesus. Think about it. You know, the Jews are going to get their land back. The other 12 tribes of Israel are going to get their land back. Christians are going to receive their inheritance. So even scholars have realized that it's likely that Jesus returns on a jubilee year and returns the land of Israel. If you remember our discussion from earlier in this teaching, the jubilee begins 10 days later than Tishri 1 on Tishri 10 which is the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. This day is commanded in Leviticus 25, 8-10. Count off seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, so that the seven Sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years. Have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the Day of Atonement. Sound the trumpet throughout the land. Consecrate the 50th year, and proclaim liberty throughout the land to its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you. Now, in this passage, we saw the seven Shabuim, or weeks, would make up one jubilee cycle. So, seven Shabuim equal one jubilee cycle. And we know the angel Gabriel decreed 70 weeks. So, doing a little math, 70 weeks divided by seven weeks, it's 10 Daniel's 70 weeks are 10 jubilee cycles. And any Jew of that era would understand this intuitively. This is the life that they lived, the calendars that they followed. 
ten jubilees were decreed by the angel. This is very, very significant. It means the end of these 70 weeks and the end of the 70th week, which is the tribulation, it's going to end on a jubilee year. So Jesus returns on a jubilee. Not only does this make sense, but it sounds good too. Now, every Jewish secular agricultural year begins on Tishri 1. Remember us saying that? We've said it over and over. Every year except the Jubilee year, which begins on Tishri 10, the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur. Remember us saying that as well. That means that the year before a Jubilee is inherently different than every other year in that it's 10 days longer. And since Jesus returns on a Jubilee, the final year of the Tribulation is 10 days longer than every other year of the Tribulation. What did Jesus say about coming back when no one expects him? Might this be part of what he meant? Yeah, maybe it's a part of it. Not all of it, but a part of it. The final year of the tribulation is different in another way. In fact, it's different in another important way. Just like in a week of days, Israelites work, sow, and reap for six days and then rest on the seventh Sabbath day. In a week of years, it's kind of like the same thing. They would sow and reap for six years and then let the land rest on the seventh Sabbath year. In fact, they call this final year of a week the sabbatical year or Sabbath year. The final year of the tribulation is a year of rest. Wow, doesn't sound right, does it? Rest for whom? We're going to get to that. It's also 10 days longer than a regular year. Does the Bible say anything about another time period that is one year and 10 days long? It does. The initial wrath of God that was poured out in the form of Noah's flood. The flood was exactly one year and 10 days long. Remember Jesus saying that the days of the Son of Man would be like the days of Noah? Was that part of what he meant? Was he talking about literal days as well as other aspects? Does this mean that the future wrath of God will be a one-year, ten-day period, just like it was the first time? During that time, would the children of God rest in heaven after being raptured while the earth undergoes the second wrath, the eschatological wrath, fire instead of water? Maybe... That is exactly what it means. So after all of this that confirms that the start of the tribulation is Tishri 1, the Feast of Trumpets, you're probably saying, okay, okay, Nelson, I get it. But what I don't get is why you think it's happening this year on this Feast of Trumpets. Let me help you with that. But first, let me say I strongly suspect it is this year. I do not know that it is this year. I guess that it's this year based on what's happening. But if you click right here and keep watching, we'll show you why everyone on our channel thinks that the signing of the covenant with the many and the opening of the first seal and the ride of the white horse could be in a matter of a week. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.